Clearly, this is a formula for success. Older black man, younger black man, a beat up pickup truck, and a junkyard. Every network should have that show on. It was nothing but sheer fun, escapism, and Red Fox was a tremendous talent. <laughs> Anytime somebody told him something he didn't want to hear, it was the big one. Heart attack time. Oh, I feel a big one. This is a big one. Oh. People faking heart attacks, that's funny. Oh, Elizabeth! I'm going to show you, honey! That's always funny. The name is the mark. He had a son that he called Dummy. Dummy. Big dummy. Dummy? Poor kid. I always felt like Lamont maybe needed a little more direction in his life. Just if he had a skill, you know, other than trimming the mustache and working at the junk shop. Come on, Lamont. Oh, if I felt like you and looked like you, I'd go down to Forest Lawn Cemetery and hang around while. Yeah, that still wasn't that pretty. <laughs> I don't think she was that ugly. For years, people going around saying, black is beautiful. They took one look at your family and said, hold everything. <laughs> It's all parodies, all characters, you know, like the Puerto Rican guy with the heavy accent. Maybe, Mr. Sanford, you got something against Puerto Ricans, huh? Vale, Mr. Sanford. Un compañero para abajo por detrás de la casa, por ejemplo, del bloque. Y nada, y nada. Poor, poor favor, Sonor. They had the kind of obligatory, idiotic white police guy who would say, right off. Right in. On. On. It was great to see all this diversity on TV. I think Sanford's done probably one of the best shows ever, ever on earth. Bingo! Yeah, turkey. Was he kicking the football on that one? I'll hold the ball and you kick it. Lucy was a biatch. <laughs> You'll pull it away and I'll land flat on my back and kill myself. What was Lucy's problem? Come on, Charlie Brown. What they are teaching you is keep trusting. It's time Just I'll keep kicking it. at that ball and eventually you'll land on your back going, ah! You can try again. I got dated with a couple of Lucy's in my time. Isn't it peculiar, Charlie Brown, how some traditions just slowly fade away? And we wonder why Charlie Brown has confidence issues. Holidays always depress me. Charlie Brown shows are always a little bit melancholy and sad, perhaps because the children are unsupervised. <laughs> from dawn till dusk. <laughs> what are you going to do on Thanksgiving, Charlie Brown? His parents are nowhere to be seen, and he has to supply Thanksgiving for his friends. <laughs> Did anybody ever understand what they were saying? I think, actually, that's all I heard when my parents would talk to me was, wah, 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 wah. Um, he was like a lovable loser guy. He had a big head like I did. He's what, six or seven years old? The kid's bald already. He doesn't have one hair in his head. He's built like a box. I mean, you would be sad if you were Charlie Brown. How do I always get into these things? Those Charlie Brown specials do seem kind of like life sucks. Snoopy's the coolest thing on the planet. Snoopy was the dog with the most attitude. I don't know, I related to him. Scooby-Doo was going to make the whole dinner. Mm -hmm. No, not Scooby-Doo. Um, Snoopy was going to make the whole dinner. And he couldn't cook, or it didn't work, or they burnt something. What blockhead cooked all this? That Beagle is smart enough to make toast and jelly beans. Throw a turkey in the oven. It's not that much harder. What kind of a Thanksgiving dinner is this? Eight track classic. Young up, buggy. What is that about? I don't know what it was about. It was absolutely nothing. Dance and sex. It's sexual. Is Jungle Boogie about sex? Shut up, it is not. It was about the funk, is what it was about. The beat was just bananas. The funk, yo. Let it flow. No, I'm not gonna dance for you right now. No, I'm not gonna do it. No, I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna get you. Jungle Boogie. Jungle Boogie. You know, ooh, oh. <laughs> That's the whole song. I love 73. It's new Baby Alive. I drove my mother crazy about Baby Alive. I had to have one. Finally, she got me a Baby Alive, and I loved it. You believe in magic. It's alive. Is that the one that Peter pants? Baby Alive is the baby you feed, and it poops. I peed my own pants. I didn't need a doll. 
little girls, you know, you play with your dolls and you pretend that they, you know, had to have their diaper changed, but this one actually did. Pottery food. You would add water to it, mix it up in a little bowl, and you would feed, ba you know, the baby. And about, I guess, maybe 10, 15 minutes later, I wonder what's in your diaper. And then you got to clean the diapers. I don't know why that was fun. I don't think I felt maternal. I think I just wanted to see it poop. We're not going to show it, are we? Oh. Oh. There was something about it that was a little creepy. I'm afraid of the doll, frankly, and I, I'd rather not be seen with it for too long. Can you? <gasps> oh, it's so scary. It's primarily about your bowels, and that's that's a lot of fun for kids. Sally. Oh, Lord, the Walters was so boring. My mom used to make me watch the watches every, every week. One thing we, I think we all enjoy about seeing this television is looking down our noses at poor people. You're going to college wearing long pants like the rest of them. John Boy would get a pair of underwear from Grandpa. It made me feel literally, really like people in the country are really, it's not that bright. Yeah, that's true. What's not to like about a white trash family living in the sticks more kids than you can count, and a child named John Boy. Elizabeth, honey, what's the matter? My favorite character on the Waltons was John Boy because, you know, through his corny hillbilly eyes, you saw how really humble and thankful he was for the little scraps they had. Sure don't look country. <laughs> oh, Daddy. I thought John Boy was cute. I confess. <laughs> but you look so funny. What was that on his face? John Boy had something on right here. He did. I just thought it was like the sixth Walton. They already were talked about it. You know, if they argued, he never went like, uh, hey, who took a dump on your face? Look, it's Richard Thomas, you know? He's got a thing on his face. He can't fault the guy for it. I've got a thing on my face, too. It's called Fruity Simplex, too, but I still I still get by. Good night, Mama. Good night, Aaron. Good night, Mary Ellen. Good night, Elizabeth. Good night, John Boy. Good night, Jim Bob. Good night, Mama. Good night, Aaron. Good night, Mary Ellen. Good night, Grandpa. I remember trying to do that in my house and having it met with shock. Good night, Good night. Good night, Elizabeth. Good night, John Boy's Mall. I already said good night to you. Good night. Good night, everybody. I love 73. Coming up, good, clean fun with Shrinky Dinks. What could be more fun than a plastic disc? Plus, 007 gets jungle fever. James had to get with a sister to compete for that shaft dollar. <laughs> And those handy little outfits they called leisure suits. Roll them up in a ball and throw in your suitcase. You unravel them. It's perfect. Next on I Love 1973. But first, the roller rink anthem of 1973. Leif Garrett here. Get ready to bust out the satin shorts and lace up those skates. Because it's time for the roller rink anthem of 1973. So Goodbye, Yellow Brick Road, by Elton John. The Roller Rink Anthem of 1973. Boxy Ladies of 73. Eric Estrada here, sending out an APB for the Foxiest Ladies of 1973. Do you copy? Carly Simon, you're so vain, Foxy Lady. I bet you think this song is about you. Gladys Knight. She's taking the midnight train to Foxville. And Carol and Paula, looks like we got a couple of foxes in the Magic Garden. That's a Big Ten Four on the Foxy Ladies of 1973. And yes, they can call me Punch any day. I love the 70s. I love the 70s. Live and Let Die is the inaugural Roger Moore outing. Good evening. Name's Bond. You are from Sean. Sean Connery. Bond. James Bond. To, uh... My name's Bond. Uh, yeah, he's bad. Roger Moore. My name is Bond. James Bond. Did you miss with that? It had Yafikado as the bad guy, Kananga, which was unforgettable. Quite revealing. He played a dual role. My name is James. is for tombstones, baby. Bond must die. And the immortal Jane Seymour. Dr. Quinn, medicine woman. Then she just had giant cleavage. It also had Jeffrey Holder as the voodoo guy. Now, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Jeffrey, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, the Seven Up guy. Uh, 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 uh. No, I'm I'm sorry. I was doing the Voodoo guy, uh, and then it turned into the Count from Sesame Street. Uh, 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 uh. I'm going to be completely useless to you. Sure, we'd be able to lick you into shape. It was a fine combo platter of taking the James Bond thing from the 60s, where he's a suave, a sophisticated Englishman who is a, an irredeemable giver of unprotected sex, to uh, all the hot black exploitation movies. It was the 70s, man. James had to get with a, with a sister to compete for that shaft dollar. Right on, brother. They constructed this elaborate voodoo thing around it, and they found a way to combine them together. And, uh, and it, movie magic was made. Absolutely. There's no sense in getting off half cocked. I love 73. The key word in leisure suits is leisure. Relax. Play some pong. You're in a leisure suit. There's the suit you wear at the office, and there's the suit you wear out on the town. It comes in powder blue. The white belt, white shoes. It's high. It's really wide. Big collar, right over the leisure suit collar. Sometimes zippers, so stitching on the yokes and things. You wear it to uh, to dance somewhere, and that's really the only times it's appropriate. It's a chick magnet, is what it is. Can you imagine being on a date with someone in, in a leisure suit? They go into a place, I guess, wearing leisure suits or any polyester. They can't keep your eyes off you. Yeah. For me, the leisure suit was never cool. I'll see Mod Squad or Foxy Brown movies, and I think, these are kind of sexy. Uh, there are colors in leisure suits that you wouldn't find in nature. You wouldn't find in natural fibers. You know, they can do wonders with chemicals. Of course, if anyone smoked near you, you'd go up like a tinderbox. Just ball them up in a suitcase, and out they pop, wrinkle-free. Throwing your suitcase, you unravel is perfect. You could hose it off, drip dry, wrinkle-free. He's a sheet. Started in the 70s. Everybody was dressing like pimps, even a preacher. Hollywood guys like Burt Reynolds, Lee Majors, Ryan O'Neill, Bob Barker. Richard Nixon did not wear a leisure suit. Honestly, remember crying when my mother made me wear a mustard yellow leisure suit. My parents would send me to church in it, weddings, funerals. Perhaps the most dreadful representation of the 70s. Bye. Charlotte? Charlotte! Charlotte's Web is the story of a spider who befriends a pig who's going to be slaughtered. I don't want to die! Poor little piglets that get slaughtered. It was the first time I thought about that, and I loved bacon. Do you want a friend? Charlotte was the truest of friends. Normally, people don't like spiders that much. God, people love that little spider. I'm glad you're here, Charlotte. Will you stay for a long, long time? And then along comes trash like arachnophobia, giving spiders a bad name. It's bullshit. Templeton the Rat was my favorite because I love that he would go into the fair and just eat everything. A fair is a veritable smorgasbord, smorgasbord, smorgasbord. After the crowds have ceased. They send the rat to the fair to come back with words that Charlotte can spell in the web to keep the pig from being slaughtered. And the people see these webs and think, oh, that clever pig wove the webs. Not the spider who's right by the pig. The first law in survival. Market yourself well, live longer, be happy. In a while, I'll be dead. When Charlotte died, that was the first insane tear moments of, I think, probably my life. <laughs> and you're sad for Charlotte because she's so calm about the whole thing. What's a life anyway? We're born, we live a little while, and we die. We watched it at my dad's friend's house, and I watched it with his two daughters, and there I am crying in front of them. That sucked. Don't watch it. It's too sad. Charlotte, your children are safe. And then she, all the babies come out. I've seen pigs, and I guarantee you that, like, a pig would have eaten a lot of those spiders that came out. <laughs> Goodbye! That's a wonderful message. You give birth, and then you die. Fantastic. Thank you, Charlotte. I love 73.
Dark Side of the Moon is one of the greatest records ever made. It was on the Billboard charts for like a billion years. It's a work of art. It's an epic adventure. It's stupendous. Listen to Pink Floyd and you think like someone understands you and thinks at the level you think at. Breathe is just one of those relaxing songs that you can just kind of drift away to. Sorry, I'm okay. You've got to listen to that album with a headset on because there's a lot of stuff going on in that record. The room, room could be dark. Yeah, the room could be dark too. Yeah, there was definitely some out of space, out of this world thing. Probably helps if you're stoked up on I don't imagine. It sounds like it was made on it. But most people think of us as a very drug-oriented group. Of course we're not. You can trust us. Mr. Gilmore, I do apologize if you weren't stolen when you made it, but you certainly sound like you were. We were down in my friend Scott's basement, under the influence, listening to the dark side of the moon, and then all of a sudden these little electrical sparkles started to happen, and I'm like, okay, this is really going, you know, I mean, I had a good trip. These kids don't know anything about Pink Floyd. They don't know what it's like to grow up in a small town smoking pot, crying to yourself, out at night drinking warm beer with your friend thinking deep thoughts, looking at the stars, and smoking more pot. Right on. Bigger gets littler, taller gets smaller as you make your favorite thing. Hour after hour. There was no gimmick greater than the Shrinky Dink. They were called Shrinky Dinks because they would shrink into dink-sized keepsakes. Welcome to the magical world of Shrinky Dinks. Well, you know, I, I remember Shrinky Dinks. When they got hot, they got smaller and shrunk up. If I ever have that effect on a man, just kill me. They're still around today, but, but they have something for that. It's called Viagra. Fantastic. Here's what it starts with. Cook it for three and a half hours, and you get that. You would cut them out, some also that you could fill in, or you could make your own original ones. And then, like anything else that you would do with plastic, you'd stick it in a toaster. The fumes alone are fun. A kid going to the oven to put them in there to cook them, just so they could shrink up. I don't know who was thinking of that. Shrinky dinks make the fun shine. What could possibly happen to a three-year-old child with a hot oven? The excitement of your new shrinky dink overrode the pain of grabbing it before it had cooled down. What could be more fun than a plastic disc? Years later, you would think, what the hell was I doing? What a waste of time. With my shrinky dink, I mean, there's no end to the things that I do. Like, for example, hey, where'd the shrinky dink go? I don't know. Here it is. Want to play again? An absolute waste of time. I should have been reading a book. I'll... Macho Man of 73. When you're a 10, you know a thing or two about men. Macho, baby. Bo Derek here with the Macho Man of 1973. Robert Redford and Paul Newman. Two macho men on one screen. James Taylor, the sensitive macho man. Is that possible? And Roger Moore, 007 macho man. From Hollywood, the dating capital of the world. The dating game was really driven from the premise of people will do anything to get on television. And here they are. Including dating strangers that could be murderers. I didn't think dating could get any more embarrassing. And then I thought, wow, the only way this could get worse is if I did it on television. Hi, Aaron. Good afternoon, Debbie. Hi, Debbie. Three contestants would come on and whore themselves on television. Ladies, good afternoon. Hello oh, there, sweetheart. Hello, Yvonne. And you had to outdo some dude like Tom Selleck. Bachelor number one. Yes. If I were your lump of clay, what would you mold me into? You're right, my, 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 my what, my what? <laughs> you like terrible double entendre, sort of pseudo-sexual conversation. Well, I'd mold you into an orange. Why an orange? So I could see your navel. <laughs> you may ask.
ask these ridiculous questions. Do you think Mickey Mouse will grow any taller? You start realizing what questions are truly important. Like, are you crazy? If I said that dress did make you look fat, how would you take it? If somebody didn't call, would you try to stab them? Craig, you have a tough job right now. Hey, I wonder which one I would like. The only thing between me and the three girls is a cardboard wall. Give me a break. The wall's coming down. This ain't East and West Berlin, baby. I think I'll take Bachelorette number three. Number three, all right. He's either going to be looking at himself like, what was I thinking about? <laughs> or he's going to say to himself, oh, I did a good thing. I picked a nice one. Congratulations. Those were kind of shows I watched, you know what I mean? I guess those were like the early reality shows, really. I love 73. The Joy of Sex was a bunch of very sexy, flea-ridden people having sex. In every which possible way, under the guise that it would help people. And there was the joy of cooking. And God forbid you mix those two up. Who wants fur pie? Sorry, are you talking to me? Ooh, I never tried that. If you weren't trying some of these alternative sexy lifestyles and you were a big loser in the 70s. As far as I was concerned, a harness is something for horseback riding, and that's it. It was one of those books that you were hoping would be in the library when you were scrolling through as it was like a seven-year-old. How did this get here? Oh, wow, what's that? <gasps> Whoa. I read Joy of Sex cover to cover and saw all the pictures, and I was so embarrassed. <laughs> if you look at it now, it looks like a very hairy book. Certainly not designer b over here. This is, I mean, nobody, they have ever heard about trimming stuff. Certainly the, the artist is not from Brazil. It was icky. It was icky. This guy's got a pot belly. He's got like a scraggly beard. Although he is hung like a moose. Charlie Manson, I'm telling you right now. Charles Manson's Joy of Sex. Is that Squeaky Phone? Yes, it is. Now we know why they call her Squeaky. Clothed intercourse, Chinese style. The Big Tough. Buttered bun. What the hell? What's that? The tongue bath. Which is going systematically over every square inch of a partner. With long, slow, broad tongue strokes. What are we, cats? Anal intercourse, the first sentence. This is something which nearly every couple tries once. Uh, can I borrow this? I just wanted to check into it a little bit more. Savage. song written strictly so that drunk rednecks can yell something at a concert. If I leave here after this interview, will you still remember me? If I leave Because I'm as free as a bird in this bird. You ain't gonna change, mama. But you still remember Free bird, my dear. Genius. Skinner is the 70s to a lot of people. This is too many places I've Freebird taps into that part of all of us that wants to hear someone saying, This is the guitar song. Three guitar attack? Come on. How long does that guitar solo go on? Any band that could play lead for 15 minutes and turn that into a hit you can't beat that. I just think there's something really uh, cool about that band. Like, this is who we are, and we're just good old boys, Southern Rock. The greatest rock band ever. I love 73. Babe. Sonny and Cher are the ethnic Osmonds. Just as I thought, ravioli. Just a strange pair. I love you being my wife, and I, I, I love being your husband, and I love having you on my show. <laughs> Come out, do a little banter back and forth, and then sing. I can't see me loving nobody but you for all my life. Cher was the, was the one. He gave all the great lines to Cher, and he was kind of... 
be there as the pin cushion. I don't think you realize that I have animal magnetism, do you? Sure I do. That's why there's so many dogs around the house. Sonny was just that lovable, goofy sort of guy. Lover. I have one word to describe Sonny Bono. Hunkasaurus. We're great lovers. We're love by all. Dirty double dealing Delilah. I love Cher. <laughs> I want to be Cher. She was a B-A-A-M-B. Bam. She was so sexy and so irreverent and just in your face and talented. Cher was the reason that I could not stand up in third grade, go to the blackboard and do a problem. She had like a gigantic nose. I still think the, the biggest thing in your life is right in the middle of your face. <laughs> She almost had a sort of goony quality to her, but she was so confident that it was sexy. She was the Mackie daddy in her Bob Mackie. The only one who comes close to her is Liberace. There was a lot of sexual tension going on between the two of them. A lot of, a lot of screwball, wacky comedy. When will my Napoleon be delivered to me? One Napoleon. They were wacky. They were, they were in love. All right, everybody. God bless you. This is the Battle of the Sexes, right here in Houston, September 20th. I don't think that qualifies as a true Battle of the Sexes, because Billie Jean King was a little more Bobby Riggs than maybe even Bobby was. The whole Billie Jean King, Bobby Riggs thing was ludicrous, because you had a, an old, retired, embarrassing tennis player playing a female tennis player in her prime. Whatever she can do, I can do better. He was a bit older. I mean, when you go out onto a tennis court with a walker, maybe it's not evenly matched. He's got I do think a woman can beat Bobby Riggs. Do you really think that this match should be the symbol of, of the women's struggle against the men? Absolutely. Bobby Riggs was this big chauvinist pick. Didn't Bobby Riggs look a lot like Woody Allen? Do you want that kiss again? <laughs> it was the chauvinist pig versus uh, the new woman. You know, it was a show. Bobby Riggs was putting on a show. I'll wear high karate aftershave. That way she won't be able to concentrate. Oh, he doesn't turn me on. <laughs> he did it for the publicity. Is the aftershave lotion another one of your hustles? Absolutely, it's beautiful. Everyone hopes she just kicked his ass. All night. Hello. I don't think anything's going to help Bobby now. Bobby Riggs was so tired at the end of it. It wasn't even a matter of winning anymore. We just wanted him to live. Bobby Riggs taking 415 pills a day. For a woman to just go, I'm going to kick your ass. Watch me. You know, nobody did that kind of thing before. So it was very cool that she won. And I just turned it off from it because you know, a true battle of sex is you have to have two, a male and a female at the top of their game, go at it. Bone it. No. <laughs> she had to beat him and she whipped him. And it was good that she whipped him because a lot of things could have been different had she not. Well, that's life, I guess. I love 73. Coming up, sweet memories of the Easy Bake Up. That was the last time I cooked. Plus, the most talked about barfing episode in U.S. history. What did she vomit? What was that? And the original bald is beautiful guy. Love you, baby. You're beautiful. Next on I Love 1973. But first, remember this? Hi, Grandpa. Can we give you a checkup? For well, sure. Fisher Price's first medical kit is very special. It comes with a stethoscope that really lets you listen to heartbeats. And a blood pressure band that can be squeezed. There's something to look into ears with and something to tap a knee with. <laughs> Our medical kit has lots of things young doctors need to give their patients the very best of care by Fisher Price. Wonders of 73. I'm Linda Carter. Bringing you the wonders of 1973. All the world is waiting for you. That year, we witnessed the birth of baseball's designated hitter, Crazy Glue, the Cuisinart, and the disposable lighter. Concerts were never the same again. I love the 70s. I love the 70s. Kojak is a bald, macho, but sensitive Greek cop who likes lollipops. Don't laugh. Kojak, 
Who loves you, baby? I love Theo. He was the cool, he was the suave, but you didn't want to get on his bad side either. You stop talking to me like a general, I'll take my lollipop away. Kick someone's ass while you're eating a Tootsie Pop is, is classic. Let's talk about oral hygiene for a minute, Kojak. I don't see you brushing after them suckers. I thought you were a cop, so he's some kind of role model. Pack a toothbrush, Curly. That sounds like a threat, Cinderella. No matter how big the case was, no matter how big the crime, Telly never sweated. Kojak always showed up at the crime, looked around, and hey, I better solve this. Solve it sitting behind the wheel of a big car. The big stuff. Solve it sitting behind a desk, smoking a cigar. You think you are? Oh, yeah. I want to find out where he goes, what he does, and who he talks to when he's not bugging me. The big stuff. He was always on the job. Did he have a social life in that show? I don't think so. If I ever see you near me, or any of my family, I'm going to scatter your brains from here to White Plains. He would just pull up, and he always had a parking space. Yeah, he parked wherever he wanted to park. <laughs> that's what it was. Double park, triple park. But that's when cops were cops. Loves you, baby. You're beautiful. That was like D-line. You know, you meet a girl in the club or something. Who loves you, baby? All the women thought he was sexy. Man, that was one ugly dude. What are you looking at? I was obsessed with him. I thought he was the sexiest, sexiest guy alive. He made everybody feel like, yo, that guy is all right. Kojak is real. Who loves you, baby? I love 73. Schoolhouse Rock! Is that the one with Conjunction Junction? Conjunction Junction. What's your function? Hooking up words and phrases and clauses. I still don't know what a conjunction is. And that's an additive like this and that. But that's sort of the opposite. Not this, but that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. 1787, I'm told. I Schoolhouse Rock taught me everything I know about grammar, math, science, and government. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. Yeah. And you felt so bad, you just wanted it to be a law. You wanted to be a law. George Bush comes in and vetoes his ass. You mean even if the whole Congress says you should be a law, the president can still say no? Yes, that's called a veto. Schoolhouse Rock was a uh, double-edged sword, really. It was kind of fun, but you were being forced to learn, which I thought was unfair. Hey! Well, you didn't know you were learning. That was the fun part. Wow! Do people say there's something wrong with Schoolhouse Rock? Because they're wrong. Hooray! It was teaching kids through the power of music. Dawn, that's the end. Right on. This is the roller derby. They call it America's fastest growing sport. Roller derby is the sport in which women on steroids strap on roller skates and hit each other. I don't think they had any rules. I think that they, they said they had rules. They looked like bullshit to me. My mother actually was in the T-Birds in San Diego. She was called Betty the Bomber. She's got pictures of her just, you know, knocking people down. Insane. It was wrestling on wheels. I remember roller derby on television and movies, and man, it was a big deal. Hey, Raquel Welch made a movie about roller derby. Hey, a big fat couple on you can't skate any better than she seemed a little sexy for the job. Right, right. I love when they would grab the chick's hairs and just kind of pull them and yank them and throw them over. I mean, that was like my favorite part. You just wish they would mic their ankles when they broke. You know, it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> Kill you. They would trip you. So I mean, I think anything was allowed if they could get your hands on you. The camera would be on this person. They would see him. They, I'm gonna get you, bitch. And then it would be just, well, shut up, bitch. I hate you. Well, I, look, I like any kind of violence on skates. I'm not gonna lie to you. Big women, tall, muscular, tough women. My kind of woman. <laughs> Pretty women pushing each other around. Very good sport. I love 73. Easy bake, easy bake, fast as you can. Easy bake oven was a gift from God. You get a package of mix, you bake your mother for a bowl, you mix it up, I think almost always with water, maybe an egg if it was really fancy. That was the last time I cooked. It was a little bit annoying that the clock wasn't real because then you ended up overcooking or undercooking. Was it only heated with like a light bulb or something? It bakes like magic with two ordinary light bulbs. You'd wait like like two hours while it cooked from a light bulb. Easy Bake Oven is a lamp with a door on it. Would have been nice if it had a broiler because a pork roast would have gone great with my upside down cake. 
we made a chocolate cake like in that little silly like silver pan. I remember the chocolate sort of it looked like a pancake and I don't know what it was supposed to be but it was delicious. Children of that age don't have the most discriminating taste buds. I mean, you're still eating grass and dirt sometimes. It takes a mouse exactly four hours to die inside of one. I just know that offhand. Cut the cake, please. I want to zone, zone, zoom, 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 zoom. How could you forget zoom? I wanted to be a kid on Zoom. I remember thinking, those kids are really cool. So we should just watch it to see the little Asian girl. I'm Bernadette. I'm Bernadette. Zoom was a great show for kids because the kids could just participate. All you have to do is put your elbows together, swing your arms around, and there. Now try with me. This thing. I remember this. I remember the kids all doing this. Do you think that's how she got the job? I didn't do my arm trick for my audition. After we got on, they wanted us all to do a signature. You know, I'm Lori, I'm Leon. I'm Leon! I came on playing drums. I had nothing else to do. So I did this. I'm Bernadette. I had no idea people were going to remember this all these years. How about you, folks? Subby, mubby, tubby. How about jibbers? Gabba, thrubu. How about you, friends? Abim, bubber, nubber, dubber. Dubbis, abis, abba, bubby, dubba, bubby. A lobo, frabbins. Dubby, dubby, dub, rubby, dubby, dub, dub. My little brother and I made up our own language called kosho. Kosho, kosho, minamaka, kosho. And it meant nothing, but to us it was our secret language. They teach you how to make cakes, your own cakes and pies. I never tried it, though, but I was amazed. Wow. Terry, that's beautiful. It's time to roll out the barrels. I always wrote into Zoom. I don't know if my mother ever mailed the letters. Today's Zoom barrel idea comes from Lynn Wilson of Winder, Georgia, who says, here's a game called Cracker Whistle. It was educational without feeling like, you know, you were being force-fed. Come on, Dave. Come on. <laughs> They're always asking for you. Send us stuff. To whom? Send it to Zoom. Three, five, five. One, two, one, three, four. Send it to Zoom. I have not done that since I was 12 years old. Okay. <laughs> I love 73. Coming up three decades late, the disturbing question still raised by the exorcist. Is it wrong that I thought she was cuter after she became possessed? <laughs> Next on I Love 1973. But first, the follicle fad of 73. Hi, I'm Isaac Hayes with your follicle fad of 1973. Oh, yeah. Baldness. Kojak made it sexy. I made it sexier. But Charlie Brown was the original ball stud of the 70s. Who knows more about hair than me, baby? says the primate of 73 is... Exorcist. Still, and may always be the scariest movie of all time. It terrified America. I was scared. This. <laughs> I'm like a scary movie freak. I've seen them all. But that one, like the possession thing, I, I, no, it wasn't cool at all. Linda Blair is a very normal, sweet, well-adjusted little girl who becomes possessed by the devil. <laughs> it probably brought more Catholics back to church than anything else because the fear that you might be inhabited by the devil. She's just a devil. wrong that I thought she was cuter after she became possessed? Find the devil. Now kindly undo these straps. Father Alex Karras comes over and he starts dealing with Reagan. How long are you planning to stay in Reagan? Until she rots and lies stinking in the earth. Linda Blair played the young girl who had the true potty mouth. You bastard! She says things like, your mother's to hell. And other delightful bon mots. <laughs> me! Me! 
I mean, God, when you get to hear that as, as, a, as a young kid, that's you walk out of the theater feeling pretty cool about yourself. Ah! It's like, yay, Satan! <laughs> Anytime you got a movie where a girl is, like, stabbing herself in the uglies with a crucifix, it's like, wow! I mean, this is seriously crazy. Was she sacrilegious? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm a Jewish boy, and I found it frightening, you know? The scariest part was when the girl's head turned all the way around. <laughs> I mean, complete around 360, okay? When you see something like that, you want to get out of the house. Be silent. Oh. I probably want to go to... She projectile vomits on him. <laughs> what did she vomit? What was that? I remember the vomit looking like uh, Campbell's pea soup. The part when they lift up her shirt and it, she writes from her inside, she writes, help me. That always really creeped me out. It's the power of Christ. And all of a sudden her voice will become like, why you do this to me? The mother of the priest. my mother! I thought we were all going to hell collectively just because we viewed it. To this day, people still feel that it's the scariest movie of all time. I love 73.